Hello, and thank you for visiting Graphene Business Law. If you're watching this video on YouTube, please go ahead and click on the red subscribe button down below. Graphene Business Law is your go-to platform for business law services for entrepreneurs and small and medium-sized business owners and operators in Toronto and beyond and will regularly be posting content here on YouTube that speaks to your areas of interest as an entrepreneur or small or medium-sized business owner or operator. My name is Pamela Mitani, and I am the principal lawyer and founder here at Graphene Business Law. Today's topic is focused on a fairly recent case that came to the Supreme Court. By fairly recent, I mean at the very, very tail end of 2020. And it is, I say that, first of all, to mention that the case has some impact on, on Canadian law moving forward, but also the concept of the case or the point at issue is one that I believe is particularly useful and applicable to small business owners and operators, and that is the duty of honesty in contractual dealings. As a business lawyer, we see all the time that parties can come to become business owners and operators from very different experience backgrounds. And this can cause asymmetries in the marketplace, whether it be in the standards that certain business persons bring to practice or the level of honesty, as will be the focus of today's video, whatever the case may be. If there was no asymmetries between business persons, uh, certainly lawyers would be able to have a lot more vacation time than they do. But the fact that we're working all the time to promote your interest here at Graphene speaks to the fact that um, there's quite a few disagreements that come up and quite a few asymmetries, I continue to use that word, in person's approaches in business dealings and contractual dealings. So I say that to really drive home the importance of bringing symmetry to everyday business practice through impactful cases and what they stand for, such as, again, today's fairly recent case on the duty of honesty in contractual dealings. To take a step back, in 2014, the Supreme Court of Canada came out with a decision that all parties to a contract have the duty to act honestly. This was in a case that's referred to as BASIN, B-H-A-S-I-N. Ever since then, um, cases came before judges where directions uh, given by the court, you know, went, uh, went in specific offshoots, how leading, of course, business persons to wonder, you know, what Bazin really stood for and where we would go from there. More recently, the Supreme Court of Canada provided clarity in a case that is referred to as Zollinger, and this is a case coming from the end of 2020. Zollinger, of course, grapples with that question of duty of honesty in contractual dealings and determines that what constitutes dishonest conduct is a fact-dependent exercise. Zollinger does, however, also expand that scope of what the duty of honesty means in everyday contractual dealings between persons. And that dishonesty can include active deception as well. Now, uh, and beyond active deception, I should say, Zollinger expands the scope of dishonesty to mean more than active deception. In other words, it's not the case that dishonesty in contractual dealings is only when you answer yes to a question for which the answer is a clear no. There is more to business sense and business practicalities that we want to promote in the Canadian landscape, at least when it comes to what we mean by honest business practices between agreements, between commercial parties, individual parties, whatever the case may be. The facts of Zollinger are not the most complicated. And for the purpose of this video, I will keep that factual recap to just a few sentences. The point of these videos is to be helpful and be digestible. So I certainly won't take, you know, 20 pages with the explanation, 
But in a nutshell, the plaintiff in Zollinger was one that was providing winter services, no removals, no clearing for a condominium board. And the condominium board decided it no longer wanted these services. It wasn't very pleased with, with um, you know, their quality, so the story goes. However, they never conveyed this message to the plaintiff itself. So the plaintiff continued to provide businesses, business services, for which the tab continued to accrue. And eventually the court came to decide that the way the contract had been terminated between the parties was not one that was in line with the termination clauses within the agreement itself and was a manner of, of uh, dishonesty through which the contract came to be terminated and through which the plaintiff came to find out that the contract had been terminated. So the court here, the Supreme Court of Canada, the highest level, came to hold that the duty of honest contractual performance now precludes active deception. The defendant in this case, the condominium board, breached its duty of honesty by misleading the plaintiff into believing that the agreement would not be terminated and accordingly, as, as we mentioned earlier in this video, exercised that uh, termination clause in a manner that was not within scope of the agreement itself. So what does this mean for everyday business persons such as yourself, everyday small or medium sized business owners or operators or startup owners or operators? Zollinger both establishes certain principles within that intersection of honesty and contractual law, but also uh, reaffirms certain principles as well. Some of the big picture items coming out of Zollinger are that the dishonesty at hand must be directly linked to the contract. Now, what does this mean? If the party responsible for winter services in Zollinger also had a contract with the condominium board to bring an ice cream truck by every Sunday for, for the residents of the condo, and things were going wrong with that ice cream truck endeavor, and the condominium board was acting dishonestly there, but everything was going well with the winter maintenance and snow removal. The plaintiff couldn't sue through the snow removal contract because something was going wrong with a completely detached ice cream services contract, right? So the dishonesty has to be linked to that contract we're actually looking at. Other principles coming out of Zollinger is that the duty of honest contractual performance is common law doctrine. It is something that is long standing in our jurisdictions um, here in Ontario. And of course, coming out of the Supreme Court, the case applies more generally as well, has power throughout Canada. Uh, another principle is that dishonesty includes more than lies. So this is a really powerful aspect of Zollinger and a really powerful piece of knowledge for you as a business owner and operator as well in terms of getting up your your spidey senses when you feel that the other party at hand there is dishonesty involved there it should empower you to know that dishonesty does not only mean you know active lies i mentioned before the specific answering yes when the answer is a clear no that is not the only scope for which um, you might have a claim for dishonesty with the parties you're dealing with. There is that threshold for parties to you know, be fair-minded when approaching contracts. And if anything smells or feels uncomfortable, you should certainly consult a lawyer about it. And here at Graphene Business Law, we are ready to help when it comes to contractual matters, certainly for you as small and medium-sized business owners and operators. A fourth point coming out of Zollinger was that damages for dishonesty are ordinary expectation damages. So in other words, once that damage amount is, is concluded by the courts, it is more or less, or it should more or less be some amount that is in line with where you would have been as that um, hurt party, so to speak, had the contract been carried out in the manner that you expected it to. Now. We started the video by saying that the Supreme Court had found that the dishonesty prism within cases is to be applied in a case-by-case -case basis. This can create an error of uncertainty 
for business owners because case by case certainly means that the situation we're looking at is fact dependent and facts of cases are seldom exactly the same. So there can be that prism of uncertainty that you should be aware of as a business owner. However, it's also important to realize that from a policy perspective, the court did decide a certain way when it came to honesty in the Zollinger case itself and expanded that scope to mean more than active deception, more than, you know, the clear cut lies. So you could have a claim to uh, situations and scenarios outside of those very narrow angles of active deception. As I mentioned before, here at Graphene Business Law, as the name indicates, we're here to help with all business law matters and contractual matters are at the very, you know, they lead the way when it comes to business law matters, right? You are undertaking agreements all the time in, in your business dealings with other parties, with partners, with potential customers, vendors, uh, whatever, buyers, whatever the case may be. And insofar as issues arise in these contexts, you can contact us here at Graphene Business Law anytime by sending an inquiry directly to info at graphenebusinesslaw.ca. You can certainly book, our, book a consultation on the contacts tab of our website, graphenebusinesslaw.ca, and you may text us at 647-466-5985. Thank you for watching.